All right, I'll go ahead and get us started. Welcome. Good afternoon, all. Thank you for joining us for this exciting partnership and program between San Diego State University and Southwestern College. Today's information session will focus on, on the Southwestern College and San Diego State University microsite degrees. I'm Dr. Tina King, serving as the Interim Assistant Superintendent slash Vice President of Student Affairs. This informational session will be recorded and later posted on the SWC website for review. Can we please move to the next slide? Thank you. So I would like to introduce my colleagues and partners in this project who will later be speaking during the webinar. I'll turn it over to them after I cover the agenda. And first, I'd like to start off by introducing our Assistant Superintendent slash Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Manu Spradley here at Southwestern College. We also have Kat Casey Rothenberger, who is the Executive Director of the new program development at San Diego, San Diego State University World Campus. Tanya, there, thank you for waving, Casey. <laughs> Tanya Origel, who's the Supervisor of Admissions and Evaluations at SDSU's World Campus. And also, if you can please mute yourself so that the recording will be able to um, pick up all captioning. We have Mark Gresso. I'm gonna say that wrong. I'm gonna say Mark G. <laughs> and, and hopefully it will later come up who is um, part of Student Services Coordinator at San Diego State University World Campus, Dr. Rod Colvin, who's the Associate Professor of SDSU School of Public Affairs, Dr. Joe Belch, Senior Associate Dean at SDSU Fowler College of Business. We also have Jacqueline Kazaran and Aaron Togerson from San Diego State University World Campus joining us as well. The agenda that we'll be covering today uh, we'll be going over the um, in introductions of presenters, which I just did. Um, the webinar logistics will be picked up by our partners, um, as well as program information. At the end of the webinar, myself and my colleague, Dr. Spratley, will, um, we will go back and forth over the chat so that make, we'll make sure that each and every one of your questions will be answered. I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Spratley. Next slide, please. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to this exciting uh, partnership information session. Uh, we here at uh, Southwestern College are truly excited uh, about this partnership because it brings huge benefits to our South Bay community. Uh, as you can see, um, by uh, being um, in this partnership, we give our uh, students access to a very high quality education without having to leave our community at all. Uh, and we also provide access to tutoring and other ser services uh, that uh, we will talk about here, right here at Southwestern College campus uh, and uh, with people that you are familiar with and already know. So those are two of the benefits. More benefits will be talked about later. I am already uh, monitoring the chat, so please keep putting your questions in the chat. And uh, we uh, hope to answer as many of them uh, at the end as we can. Uh, welcome. Okay, um, thank you Dr. Spradley and Dr. Uh, King for hosting us. I'm really excited to be here. Again, my name is Casey Rothenberger and I'm Executive Director of New Program Development for SDSU's World Campus. Um, and um, we are so excited to be able to announce these programs, these microsites and the partnership with Southwestern that's going to provide and expand access to um, SDSU undergraduate degrees, um, particularly to those um, that are local students in our San Diego communities. Um, and this is, in this evening we'll be sharing with you the degree completion programs that we have offering uh, for this fall 2020 term and provide some more details about the programs, such so criminal justice and the business administration program. 
Uh, go ahead and do next slide, please. Uh, this is a, a quote from our president, De La Torre. Uh, when she first came to SDSU in 2018, one of her major missions was to really expand access to SDSU undergraduate degrees. And like I said, particularly for our local San Diego based students. Um, we recognize that San Diego State is currently severely impacted and there are thousands of eligible students that are unable to attend each year. Uh, so she was particularly supportive of this unique partnership that allows us to expand um, with uh, and offer access to our community college students that meet all admissions requirements. And I know that after speaking with President Murillo from Southwestern, she's equally excited and committed to this partnership. Uh, so next, let's go to the next slide for criminal justice. Um, I'm going to touch briefly on some of these. We also, uh, on these program slides, because I want to leave more time for questions as well. I know many of you have uh, questions and I want to make sure we are, have time to answer all those. So this is really an overview. Uh, you'll see at the bottom, uh, we have the website uh, for admissions and program information as well. The first program that we're offering is uh, the criminal justice uh, degree completion program. Uh, students will complete with between 51 and 60 units um, and can be completed within 11 months. That's uh, taking a, a very full course load and every course that's offered. So we anticipate most students uh, that are reworking and have other um, family obligations will probably take about two years to finish these programs. So very similar to um, a normal transfer program if you were to come into SDSU in a face-to-face -face capacity. All the courses are offered fully online in eight week modules. This is the same, uh, the case for both criminal justice and the business administration program. Um, courses are taught asynchronously and that means that students will um, not need to log in or attend the online classes at a specific time. Uh, there will be weekly deliverables for the courses but um, you won't need to sign in every Tuesday at 6 p.m. for example. Uh, you'll be able to complete the, the work uh, on your time when it's convenient for you within the due dates and the deliverable dates. Um, upon completion of the program in criminal justice, uh, students will graduate with the same exact degree as our on-campus students. Um, so there'll be no, di uh, no differentiation between the face-to-face -face degree that's awarded or the online degree that's awarded. Uh, it's exactly the same. Students have also the ability to walk in the commencement ceremonies and participate um, in other SDSU activities. Um, tuition and fees for the criminal justice are 469 per unit, uh, which does not currently include course materials. Um, it does include access to SDSU's library, both in-person and digital access, as well as access to SDSU athletics, uh, athletic and sporting events. Um, next slide, please. The next program as part of this pilot partnership is the uh, uh, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Um, this is designed for students uh, to complete within 49 units uh, or to 55, and that depends on the uh, writing placement assessment score uh, in which writing courses need to be taken. Uh, this program can be completed within two years, faster again if students take more courses each term, depending on the student's uh, availability and other commitments that they have going on. Uh, again, it's the same exact degree as awarded on campus, uh, for the face-to-face -face program, no differentiation. Um, and the uh, tuition and fees for this program is $450 per unit, uh, excluding course materials. Uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Tanya Orjo, who is our supervisor for uh, admission. Thank you, Casey. So hi, everyone. As Casey mentioned, I'm Tanya. I will be going over the transfer admission requirements, microsite eligibility, as well as the application process. So first up, we have our transfer admission requirements. We highly encourage you to visit our transfer admission website, which lists all of the detailed information regarding our transfer admission requirements, uh, deadlines, as well as resources on how to determine transfer equivalencies. And we have the link here. It's on our SCC World Campus website. Again, it's highly encouraged. All of this information is on there, but we've minimized it here for purposes of this presentation. So the transfer admission requirements for our program consist of a combination of CSU criteria and program specific criteria. A transfer student must have six or more transferable semester units, 90 or more quarter completed, required GPA based on program. Uh, the, re the required GPA is program specific. So for business administration, a minimum of 
or higher for criminal justice, a minimum of 2.8. Completion of lower division GE with a grade of C minus or higher to include the golden four requirements, which are area A1, oral communication, A2, written communication, A3, critical thinking, and B4, quantitative reasoning. And completion of lower division preparation for the major requirements. For business administration, there are nine preparation courses and for criminal justice, four preparation courses. Next slide, please. Thank you. The preparation courses are as follows. For our online general business administration program, the nine courses are financial accounting, managerial accounting, macro and microeconomics, information systems, business writing and rhetoric, business statistics, business calculus, and legal environment of business. For criminal justice, the four courses are intro to American California Government and Politics, Intro to Sociology, Introduction to Social Problems, and Elementary Social Statistics. We often receive questions from students asking if they can apply if they're missing some of the preparation courses. Uh, I do want to point out that flexibility on program admission criteria is at the discretion of the program department. So for example, if you meet all other criteria, program GPA, CSU requirements, currently our business administration department is allowing a minimum of six out of the nine prep for the major courses completed at the time of applying and for criminal justice two out of the four with the contingency that these courses be completed uh, before graduation. Again, these are determined on a case by case basis. I would encourage you to check out, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not done with that website, that slide just yet, thank you. I would encourage you to check out our online resources to determine transfer equivalencies to see what courses at Southwestern College would satisfy these requirements. Our transfer admission planner cap um, is updated annually with our most gen, uh, current SDSU general catalog as well uh, as our assist website. So these are great resources that again are available on our transfer admission website. Next slide, please. Thank you. Moving on to associate degree for transfer. So we've received this question a, a lot as well and ADT is not a requirement for program eligibility. I will get into the details of microsite eligibility in a moment. However, applicants who earn an associate degree for transfer at Southwestern College in business administration and, admis and administration of justice are prepared to meet our SCSU World Campus admission requirements. That includes CSU eligibility. Uh, so under that would follow the general education requirement, the unit requirement, and a minimum overall GPA of at least 2.0 in all CSU transferable coursework. Preparation for the major and GPA. Again, the GPA is program specific. However, applicants using the ADT pathway for admission may be within the point one, may be within point one of the GPA required by the major to which they're applying. So for example, uh, criminal justice requires a minimum GPA of 2.8. If you have an ADT, you would be admissible with a GPA of 2.7. So you are given that 0.1 bump with, with the ADT degree. For Southwestern College degree majors, Administration of Justice, the SCSU approved major equivalent is criminal justice and for business administration or business administration general program. For microsite eligibility, so to qualify for the microsite program, applicants must have completed a degree or, um, a big emphasis on or, attended Southwestern College. So again, a degree, an ADT, or a general associates is not required to be eligible. Um, you could very well have attended Southwestern College, completed courses, and meet the requirements you can still apply. Um, you can also very well have attended other community colleges, but also attended Southwestern College, you would uh, still be eligible for the program. So the application process. Our application period is currently open. It opened March 16th and the uh, deadline is May 30th. So how to apply? First, you must fill out our microsite interest form. And again, this is all on our website, on our microsite um, World Campus website. It's very important that you please fill out the interest form first. This will allow us to identify you as a microsite applicant once we receive your application. So the second step would be to fill out your Cal State Apply application. So once that is submitted and we have your microsite interest form, we'll be able to identify you as a microsite applicant. When you apply, you wanna make sure that you are selecting the term for the major for where you're applying for. So either criminal justice general extension online program or business administration general extension online program. A $70 non-refundable application fee is required of all applicants at the time of application. Admission decisions are initially based on self-reported information provided via Cal State Apply. You must provide 
and complete accurate information on your application, any misreporting will jeopardize an admission offer. So again, it's very important that you submit complete and accurate information, specifically in the course history section of the application to prevent any admission delays in admission decisions. We will review your application and if the requirements are met, you will receive an admission decision via email. It is at that time that you will need to submit your transcripts and we will then verify that the information that you self-reported is accurate. So at, at the time of application, you do not need to send official transcripts. Thank you. So application process already applied to SDSU. If you were denied admission to an on-campus program for fall 2020, it's likely that you have already received an email from SDC World Campus informing you of our microsite program. If you are interested in applying, there was a link to fill out one of our program change forms. So if, if you fill out one of the forms, it's essentially allowing the switch from your on-campus application to the online. You do not have to reapply and you do not have to pay an additional app fee. Simply fill out the form, email it to admission, Dot world at sdsu.edu and there's a program form for each there's a, a form for each program one specifically for business administration and one for criminal justice so if you are an admitted applicant to the on-campus program and now wish to switch over to online same rule applies you don't have to reapply you don't have to pay the app an additional application fee instead you would have to submit an appeal to the sdsu office of admissions on our main campus so part of the appeal uh, package, you would have to include the undergraduate admission appeal request form, and this is all on their website. All of these details on the form are linked on their website, as well as uh, transcripts and an appeal letter um, identifying your intent to switch. I do encourage you that if you have taken the step and you have submitted an appeal, that you still email World Campus Admissions at the email above so that we're, we're aware that you're in the appeal process. We can assist with um, moving along the appeal and just keeping you informed about the microsite program along the way. And here is our SDSU contact information. So World Campus Admissions, again, our email is admission.world at sdsu.edu. My contact information below. Our program details, as well as um, uh, our student services coordinator, Mark G. And I believe at this time we would open it up for questions. Yeah, I just want to, before we start questions, maybe um, one thing I didn't touch on earlier was the um, the uh, success advising and the optional on-site tutoring. So while students can complete this program entirely online without ever having to set foot on an SDSU campus or a Southwestern campus, uh, we do have the, through this partnership, we're providing uh, success advising uh, for students to help with the process of which courses to take, um, helping with the career advising, um, as well as uh, optional tutoring for the courses that um, will be offered per the respective program. So more information about the actual um, uh, model for that advising and tutoring will be available as students are admitted in the program over the summer um, and into the fall. But I wanted to just quickly highlight and touch base that those are additional services that will be provided as part of this partnership. Um, and that would be on site at Southwestern College. So I know transportation can sometimes be an issue getting to and from SDSU's campus, uh, especially traffic. P students are working full time and trying to get to class. Parking is always an issue. Um, so with the online program, uh, students don't need to come to SDSU campus and uh, actually can go to Southwestern for some of these optional services. Uh, one of the great things about the partnership and we're really excited to work with uh, Dr. King and Dr. Spradley's uh, team uh, to make that happen. Thank you so much, Casey and Tanya, for sharing that. Also, we have here our SWC contact information. Um, as Casey shared, we also have um, support from our counseling department. Um, we have that information there. Our transfer center coordinator, Nicholas Wynn, um, his information is now posted on, our, um, on the SDSU microsite webpage um, where he can be contacted directly or phone called or uh, even a, an appointment can be made with our Southwestern College Counseling uh, Division um, to ask questions about eligibility or um, any questions you have about your transcripts or where you stand as a student. Uh, so thank you both so much for sharing that information. So now what we'll do is open it up to the questions. We see quite a few questions in the chat and we wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to ask those questions. Um, Dr. Spradley and I will uh, go back and forth on the chat questions. 
and we will turn it over to our experts in the space with us today and our partners. I'm gonna go ahead and start us off. And Dr. Spratley, I'm not certain if you um, were tracking them. Do you wanna start? Okay, you wanna go ahead and start us off? Yeah, I've been tracking all of them. Uh, and I, I uh, have uh, um, a couple of uh, unique ones. There are a lot of questions about uh, tuition. There are a lot of questions about whether the uh, ADT is required, et cetera. And I'm hoping that the presentation answered all of those questions. If not, and there are questions about whether the presentation will be available. And uh, thank you for um, answering that. Uh, the, the presentation will be available on both uh, uh, San Diego State's website and ours at Southwestern. Uh, some of the unique questions uh, that I have uh, is uh, do I have to complete all of the units at Southwestern College? How many units do I have to complete at Southwestern College? Uh, and can I bring in units from uh, other colleges? That goes to our um, SDSU colleagues, please. Yes, so to answer your question, we do not have a set limit on how many units have to be completed, completed at, at Southwestern College. You can have completed courses at another community college. Um, you don't have to have completed a degree at, at Southwestern College to be eligible for microsite program. You just have to have completed, uh, attended Southwestern College. So, you know, at the minimum, we're talking one course, you know, uh, course. three units. You know, so we, uh, your institution of origin would be that you're currently attended South attending Southwestern College or have received a degree from, South, from Southwestern okay. College. There are a lot, also a lot of classes, good questions about uh, financial aid. Um, folks are using the Board of Governors waiver uh, um, uh, student, which is something that we use at Southwestern uh, to provide financial aid for our students. So if you could expand on that, please. Dr. Spratley, I'm sorry. I think your audio is cutting out. Um, I'm not certain if, if the question came across, but I believe the question was in regard to financial aid. If students who are accepted uh, to the program, are they eligible to receive financial aid through San Diego State University for the program? Yeah, I, sure. I can go ahead and take that question. Um, this, these programs with the microsite programs are self-support. And what that means is that there's no state funding uh, that goes into supporting uh, the programs. So for example, the programs that are in the face-to-face -face main campus SDSU programs are subsidized uh, in large part by the state of California. Um, and therefore there's uh, some financial aid options that are exclusive to those state funded program. However, that said, these programs, these online degree programs are eligible for financial aid um, and students are eligible to apply for financial aid there just might be certain, uh, certain types of aid that might not be available, but there's um, definitely financial aid eligibility. And part of the role of those uh, success advisors I was sp speaking to would be to help uh, the students identify appropriate financial aid avenues, assist in uh, the students reaching out to the SDSU financial aid office to understand their own personal financial aid uh, options and eligibility. But uh, long story short, these programs are eligible. There just might be different types of aid that are eligible for uh, the, the online degrees. Thank you so much, Casey, for answering that. Manu, do you want to take the next, Dr. Spratley, take the next question? Are you comfortable with me taking the next one? Good. Can you, can you hear me? We can. It, I'll go ahead and take the next question. I think uh, your audio is a little... Um, it's going in and out. I'll go ahead and take the next question. Yeah, everybody's audio is doing that, actually. Oh. Um, so um, the v VA benefits is another question. Is is for is this program uh, um, uh, eligible for VA benefits, and can spouses of veterans take advantage of this? Uh, this program would have the same uh, eligibility as the face-to-face -face programs, um, but we would also recommend that you contact the SDSU Veteran Center directly for your specific uh, veteran benefit scenario. Um, I don't want to uh, give a blanket statement because every situation is different, um, but as it being a degree program at SDSU, there is, eligible, uh, there is eligibility for uh, veterans to use their benefits. Um, but again, that's an, a case-by-case -case basis based on your individual uh, situation and scenario, but there is eligibility. 
Uh, there are quite a few questions about the number of admissions per year. Uh, for example, is there both fall and spring admission? Uh, we really hope to have spring uh, admission cycles as well. I think a lot of that will depend on the demand for fall, but that is our, that is our plan and our goal is to meet the demand. So if we have a high demand for fall and we have continued demand and interest for spring, our goal is to open spring admissions as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then uh, there are questions here about the differences between business finance, uh, business administration, and business management. And if you could clarify whether or not um, folks can take classes in other areas, given that this degree is in business administration, I believe. Dr. Belch, may I defer that question to you? Yes, uh, the program is a, the major is a general business major. And now currently the students have to take the set of courses that we have put together. There is the possibility that um, we're going to be adding additional majors, uh, probably within a year or so, possibly marketing and management information systems. And that would uh, increase the number of elective courses that students might be able to take. Uh, but right now, the students just take the courses that in specific areas that we have set up. You take uh, our core courses, which are the introductory courses in management and information systems and supply chain management, uh, marketing, uh, and then you have uh, elective courses that you do take uh, in I think actually three in management. Uh, then you take one in finance, one in marketing, um, and that rounds out the program in terms of the courses that you're going to take. But you, you, we have right now a limited number of courses that are available for students and they pretty much follow the set of courses that are available. Thank you for that. A um, Couple of really important questions. Are there any financial aid available for DREAMers? Um, I would have to defer them to the financial aid office, uh, just in, in part because I don't know enough about the individual situations and scenarios. Um, but with our contact information, uh, if you contact Mark uh, G, uh, he and I and the rest of the World Campus team will be able to uh, get back to you and um, give you a, a better, more detailed answer. Okay. I apologize, I don't have uh, it right now. Uh, so here's uh, one where I'm hoping you will be able to, to, to direct because I think I've heard you answer that question before. Um, people that get started with this program, can they then transfer over to the main campus uh, later? At this point, no. Sorry, Tanya. Uh, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> at this point, no. Uh, and that's due to the impaction of the main campus program. So. If you're admitted to the online program, um, there, um, there's, no, uh, there's no way to transfer into the face-to-face -face program. Uh, admission into the online program is for the online program. Um, and because of the impaction and there's uh, the space availability, there's no mechanism to transfer into face-to-face -face once you're admitted. Okay. And so I'm gonna combine a couple of questions here. Uh, or, or for, for you to help us out here. This is a, uh, both of these programs are bachelor's degrees that are offered through SDSU's portal, correct? Correct. Okay. When you say portal, do you mean through the SDSU's LMS, Learning Management System? Yes, Learning yeah. Management System, correct. Yes. Right, okay. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, uh, Dr. King, did you see anything else go by that I have not um, addressed by any chance? It looks like there's a question about being duly enrolled. Um, someone is questioning if they are still in the process, and I'm not certain if this was already asked. I apologize. But if I'm also in the seven, seven units away from getting my Associates of Business Administration, can I complete those seven units, units along with my B, uh, bachelor's of science courses? 
So as far as eligibility for the program, if they meet the requirements, again, the a degree is not, their associates is not required to be eligible for the program. If they meet the 60 units, the program GPA, they can still apply and those remaining units can be completed um, because again, the a degree is not necessarily uh, required for, for the program. Thank you so much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me go back and see if I'm seeing any T. Okay, so here's uh, uh, another question. How will classes work if they get full? Is there priority registration? Um, so we accommodate everybody that is admitted. So it, unlike the face-to-face the -face campus qu courses, we accommodate room for everybody that's admitted in the online courses. So if you're admitted to the program, you'll be able to uh, enroll in the course that you need to be able to complete your program on your schedule. Um, and there's no priority registration because of this. Everybody registers at the same time uh, and we make sure that we accommodate everybody. That's okay. admitted. Uh, we've sort of touched on this before, but uh, uh, the question is, uh, are there any plans to have SDSU tutors available to assist at Southwestern campus? Also, any plans to allow in-person courses at Southwestern campus? There will be the optional uh, on-site tutoring available uh, on a course-by-course -course basis at Southwestern. Um, and more information will be about available as you enroll in your courses for the course specific times um, and the availability of the, the on-site tutoring. Um, there will not be any options for students to enroll in face-to-face -face courses at SDSU to complete their degree requirements. All degree requirements once admitted must be completed in the online uh, courses. We've gotten quite a, thank you so much, Casey, for that. We've gotten quite a few questions about the PowerPoint availability. Um, for those that are calling in, that was answered. The uh, PowerPoint will be available on the uh, SD, SWC webpage. Um, the recording after, um, it will be, I'm sorry, the PowerPoint and the recording can be available on the webpage. Uh, there's quite a few questions about uh, BOG waiver cover the fees. Um, I'm going to also um, defer to what Casey shared earlier. It would be a case by case with financial aid. It would probably best to be in contact with the financial aid department and that information can be found through the SDSU. They can link it through the SDSU um, webpage. Thanks, Tina. Of course. So here's uh, someone I I am going to read the question as is because I am not 100% certain what, the, what, what was intended. Can a student over age 60 take advantage of this program? Absolutely. Uh, as long as the students meet the application and admission requirements, anybody is welcome. Okay, so here's a question that, will I be able to complete this program while attending another community college due to sports? Um, that's an interesting question. I've not come across that. Um, I, as far as I'm aware, um, as long as you meet the admissions requirements and eligibility for SDSU, um, and you uh, are, are admitted, I don't see any reason, at least on the SDSU's end that I'm aware of, that would prohibit that. Dr. Belch yeah. or Dr. Colvin, do either of you or either of you experience I would that? think you would want to check the eligibility requirements with your athletic department. Um, I think there could be some concerns there because keep in mind, if you've entered our program, you're now an upper division uh, student. So I really think that's something you would need to uh, clarify with your athletic department because you don't want to jeopardize your eligibility if you're playing a sport. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds uh, about right. Joe has it. Yeah. Some of the other questions. If the course is eight weeks long, how many classes can you take? I think that our typical students take um, uh, two courses per eight week block. Um, or uh, Dr. Belch, I think it was about three courses uh, or three or four courses per semester. So per each uh, 16 week uh, uh, group. So one to two courses per eight week block, depending on uh, work uh, requirement, work um, obligations or family obligations. 
Hey, so let me comment on that, and I'm glad this has come up. And just so you understand the structure of the program, we don't have, our semester is broken into two eight-week blocks. So you take your classes for eight weeks, and then you, in block one, and generally, our students are probably, most of them are probably taking two. There are a few who take three, and then they'll take another two or three in the second block. So you would be taking four courses over the entire semester. But keep in mind, that is up to you. At least the business program is self-paced. You, you do what works for you. Um, if you're working full time, it might be a little more difficult to take that load. So you're going to look at what works for you. We offer um, the courses uh, at least two times per year. Uh, you'll wanna pay very close attention to the scheduling and any type of prerequisites that you have. Um, but generally, what we're seeing is our students are probably taking an average of uh, two classes uh, per eight-week session. There are a few who take one. There are a, a number of students who will take three because they want to go on almost what we would call a full-time full basis. So that's where the self-paced part does come in. Uh, and also, the way the courses are structured, you will be watching videos, but you will be working. You will be put in a section with a course facilitator. And there would be a dedicated course facilitator for Southwestern uh, that you would be working with. And that's the person on a day in, day out basis that uh, you're interacting with about assignments and uh, discussion rooms and chat rooms, et cetera. Uh, so that's the way the, the courses are actually structured. The one thing I just want to add uh, about the number of units uh, or courses that you take per eight week block there are uh, a minimum number of units and number of weeks of instruction that students must be enrolled in uh, in order to maintain financial aid eligibility. Uh, so as you work with your success advisor um, in, during registration processes, you wanna make sure that you meet the minimum uh, uh, time as far as number of courses and duration and number of units for your financial aid situation. We've also received quite a few questions about um, if I if I apply to SDSU through Cal State Apply and got denied, can I still apply to SDSU World Campus through SWC through the Cal State Apply or will I be denied again? Um, there's quite a few questions about reapplying through this program after being denied. So I can take that one. If you've uh, already applied for the fall 2020 admission cycle, you've been denied. If you apply to the on-campus program and you've been denied, um, you will not be able to submit another application for World Campus. You'll actually get an error message. Cal State Apply only allows one application per admission cycle. So that's where those program change forms would come in. Um, uh, the ones linked in the presentation, there is a program change form for business administration and for criminal justice. If you fill out these forms, this will allow your application that you submitted for the on-campus program to be transferred over to on to our online program. We'll then review it. Um, you don't have to reapply. You don't have to pay the additional fee. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, excuse me. When is the deadline to register? That ask you a question. Uh, excuse me. Uh, when is the deadline to register for? So the application period is open on March 16th and it ends on May 30th. Okay, thanks for the. You're welcome. There's another question. Um, you previously stated we cannot transfer to face-to-face -face once enrolled. If we start online and wanted to go in person, would we have to start from scratch? If the online, it sounds like if the online, they get admitted and the online platform is just not working for them and they want to uh, apply to face-to-face, -face, do they have to start over? Uh, that would be a question better uh, deferred to our main campus admissions. I know that we're not, right now it's not being allowed to, if you're admitted to an online program to transfer over to the on-site. Um, there is the appeal uh, section or student on the main campus website where you can definitely submit an appeal if that's something that main campus will consider. Um, I can't really speak to it if that's something that would be approved. As far as I know, um, that's not being allowed right now. Thank you so much, Tanya. Okay. Uh, excuse me, is the degree from Southwestern College or San Diego State University? The degree will be from San Diego State University. 
for the bachelor's degree. So now, here, I, if I could add to that, please reckon it, you will be getting an SDSU Bachelor of Science degree, and it does not say online or anything. You are getting the same SDSU degree that an on-campus student would get, and that's very important because if you go to prospective employers, they're basically going to say you graduated from San Diego State with the same degree that our on-campus students graduated with. Yep. Okay. So here's a question. Can we participate on, at uh, SDSU Sports with this online program or the study abroad programs? Uh, athletics are currently state funded. Uh, so students in self-support programs, to my knowledge, are not eligible uh, to uh, participate in SDSU athletics. Um, if you are a student athlete, I would reach out directly to the SDSU athletics department and work with them to find out the different options and eligibility for your particular situation and the sports that you play. Um, because every, every sport has a different scenario and different um, situation, but it is for state funded programs. Um, as far as the study abroad options, SDSU offers a number of uh, faculty led programs that are open to everybody. Um, you would want to work with your um, individual success advisor on the articulation of any courses taken uh, while studying abroad into the program. But those are options. You would just need to look at your individual scenarios and the transfer uh, units and maximums that you're bringing in to the program to see what would you be eligible to take while studying abroad. But there are options. Thank you so much. Um, the uh, application, uh, Tanya, I just want to see if you can go over the deadline again. I believe it's, it's the 30th. Can you, the 30th, correct? Yes. Okay, May 30th. Yeah. Thank you. May 30th is the deadline, the application okay. deadline. Okay. Uh, there are also questions about the, the cost and whether or not this is uh, less cost per unit than uh, the face-to-face -face classes, or is it the same, or how does it compare? Uh, the cost per unit for the criminal justice degree is $469 per unit, and the cost of the business administration degree is $450 per unit. And it's so the cost uh, on face to face programs are based on full time or part time. So that really depends on how many units uh, you're taking at a time. So if you were to enroll in a part-time program and pay part-time tuition in the face-to-face -face program, uh, the cost could come out to be uh, very similar uh, versus the online degree program you're paying per unit. So it's one fee regardless of how long it takes you. Um, if that makes, so if you're paying a, a per unit fee where you could take two years, you could take three years and you're paying the same uh, total cost versus the campus face-to-face -face program uh, depending on if you're attending part-time or full-time and how many units you take each semester, your cost could vary. So it really depends on um, how many units you'd be taking each semester, of whether the, the total cost is significantly higher, less, or similar. Okay, so there are qu questions about fast-tracking courses. Uh, I think it was mentioned that these classes are eight week classes, uh, so they are shorter than a regular semester uh, course. Um, okay, and thank you so much, Aaron, who's also answering some of the questions, questions in our chat. Questions. We really appreciate that, Aaron. That, yeah. Yeah, and Aaron continues to provide links to uh, the financial aid info, uh, link as well as the SCSU microsite page. Thank you so much for doing that, Aaron. Um, there's a question about what about the major preparation classes? Do we have to take six out of nine in order to apply? Even if we have the 60 units and the GPA, but do not, uh, but do not have the six and out of nine preparation classes, um, will they be eligible? I can take that one. So again, the uh, we do there is flexibility sometimes at um, for the preparation for the major, um, but this is really based on whether you meet all of the other requirements. So if a student meets the GPA requirement, meets all of the CSU eligibility, meaning the lower division, the Golden Four requirements, and has at least 
specifically for business administration, as an example, has at least six out of the nine, we would encourage them to apply. Um, obviously, I can't say that it's going to be an, a, a guaranteed admission, but it is encouraged to apply um, those. There are nine required courses, but again, if they have a minimum of the six with everything else met, we would still um, encourage a student to apply at that point. If I might add something to that too, keep in mind for the business administration, we have uh, spring admission. So you could apply in August to begin the program in spring. And if you were in that situation where you had six courses, I would recommend uh, either trying to get those courses completed over the summer if you wanted to try to start in fall or spend the fall completing those courses and apply for spring admission. So if you applied for spring admission, you would do that in August and you would start in January. And that might be something that you would want to consider. Um, the question is, does uh, spring admission apply to both criminal justice and business? Um, again, depending on demand, if we have enough demand for both programs, we would love to open up spring admission as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, so um, we continue to get the, the questions about applying to Cal State Apply, getting denied, uh, can uh, the student applied through SDSU World Campus. So the application, uh, the application for on campus and SDSU World Campus is they're both through CSU Apply. So if you've already applied for Fall 2020 admission to on campus and you've been denied, you you are not able to submit another application via Cal, via Cal State Apply. Rather, you need to contact us at admission world.sdsu.edu so you can fill out one of our program change forms that way you don't have to you can't but that way you wouldn't have to reapply or pay an additional fee we simply have to have you fill out the form and 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 give your consent to switch over the application that you submitted to on campus over to on over to world campus is the de uh, a deadline to appeal the deadline to appeal uh don't have a specific deadline um the application period ends on May 30th, so the, the appeal should be submitted before then. Okay, and are students able to appeal, um, that went by really fast here, uh, uh, appeal any of the course requirements? Any of appeal course requirements? So any of the, I'm, I'm assuming they're referring to upper division course requirements? I guess I'm not too clear on the question. Um, the, the question is not, um, Yes, I asked the question. Yes, the, it's referring to upper division requirements on challenging or appealing or waiving any of those course requirements. Doctors Belcher, uh, Colvin, would you be able to take that question? Well, for business administration, we're not going to waive the requirements. Those are those nine prep for the majors have to be done. Um, and you know the questions regarding appeal and not being admitted to the on-campus program. Um, you know the on-campus program is impacted and it's even more competitive. So there's a possibility that you might have been denied because they're impacted and they couldn't accommodate everyone and you could still be admissible for our program. But for example, if you have a 2.4 or 2.5 GPA, we, we're not going to be able to admit those students. You still have to meet our entrance requirements for this program. May any of the courses be challenged? You could in your appeal, yes. I mean, we, we will would look at on the prep for the major part, at least, we would consider an appeal about a certain course, like a math requirement or a computer science course or something. We would look what course you're trying to have us consider. One so, of the questions that came up, is there a limit of how many students will be accepted into the programs for each term? Competition seems to be a concern for all major campuses within this area. If so, is there a system in place for selection that will be implemented on top of the transfer admission requirements? 
That's a great question. And it's our goal to be able to accommodate every student that is uh, satisfies the admission requirements for the programs. Okay. And there is also a question about whether or not students can participate in on campus clubs if they are accepted to this online program. I think the uh, the answer to that is probably on a case by case basis, but there is the um, depending on the exact associations or student organizations that uh, you'd like to. But um, with student organizations, I would definitely recommend reaching out to the specific uh, org, and I'm, I imagine they'll be very excited to have additional members and representation. Um, depending on the exact organization that you're referring to, uh, there may be limitations on if there's any state funding or state support that's provided to those organizations. But generally speaking, I believe uh, all world campus students would have access. Okay, uh, there's a question about class size limit. What is the limit on the class size if everybody is accommodated? Uh, typically, and Dr. Belch, I'll also turn this over to you to elaborate on, but typically that depends on the type of course. Um, I think generally the courses range from 25 to maybe about 40 or 50 students per section. Um, and then a facilitator or instructor is added uh, at, at numbers over, uh, over those limits. It really depends on the, the course and the nature of the course. And the, um, so writing courses tend to have fewer students uh, than some of the other courses. But I'll let Dr. Belch add anything there that I may have missed. No, I think that's correct. I mean, what we're doing, all students are basically watching the instructional videos, but then they are put into a section with a facilitator. And we break those out depending on the course. Generally, they've been averaging probably uh, 30 to 40 students uh, in a particular section. Uh, and if we get it gets larger, we add additional facilitators. And as I noted, uh, for this program, the plans would be to have dedicated facilitators for the sections offered there. Okay. Uh, excuse me. What are the required units or classes to take each semester? Uh, each program will be in a, a self-paced uh, design, so students can take the courses that are um, available each term based on meeting the prerequisites for each of the courses and the ability to, um, to successfully complete each course based on time uh, and other uh, obligations that you may have with work or family. Um, so each program will have a, a course a sequence that will uh, be provided once students are admitted that will help the students identify what the pathway is for completion. So for example, there'll be one sequence that allows students to complete the program in two years and there could be other sequence that will allow the program to be completed in a shorter time frame or a longer time frame. So once admitted to the program, you'll be working with your success advisors to identify the best pathway based on your individual needs uh, and time, uh, time commitments and constraints. One of the things you might do too, if you go, there is a website, uh, you could just uh, Google SDSU Online Business and you'll find the website for our online business to bachelor's degree program. And there is a lot of information there. I would really point you to the FAQ section um, and how to apply and other things. But there's a, a, a lot of detailed information there. It shows you what the courses are for the program. It shows you what the suggested sequencing of the courses, schedules, et cetera. If a student, thank you so much for sharing that information. If a student was already accepted into SDSU, but now they would like to switch to one of the online programs through the microsite um, program, uh, microsite degrees, do they need to um, uh, submit an appeal? Yes, they would have to submit an appeal to the main campus office of admissions. Okay. So, so one of the questions is, are the requirements for getting into the online program the same as getting on the, in the, into the on-campus program? 
the the pro yes the programs uh the requirements are the same for um online and on campus mm -hmm. so um another question that keeps coming back is uh, may a student take elective extracurricular courses that are beyond the course schedule requirements Uh, early on in the business program, I mean, you follow the, the set of courses that we have. I mean, the, in the online program, we don't have minors. Um, and so, as I said, if additional courses get added, um, then there might be, as we add more programs um, at SDSU online programs, then you could look at and, and make a request there to take those online courses, but they will have to be through our world campus. You won't be able to take those through the on-campus program. And that goes back to Casey's uh, original point about this being a self-support program versus a state-funded program. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dr. Belch is exactly right. As we build out more programs uh, with these microsite partnerships and even with the criminal justice and the business administration, students may opt to or request to take additional courses from the other programs. Uh, they, want to, they want to apply towards their degree objective uh, or be used as the assessment for their degree evaluation, uh, but they will have the option to, um, to request to take those additional courses for more for personal enrichment and to round out their education. They would have to pay the, the additional fees uh, outside of the total cost of their program to take those additional courses. So here's a question that we can answer. Being a uh, Southwestern student, will we retain our access to Southwestern fa facilities, library, parking pass, gyms, uh, et cetera? Um, the answer is yes. Uh, you will have access to the library. And from our library, you will be able to access SDSU material from, from, from our library. Uh, and uh, there will be parking passes and gym uh, uh, facilities etc those will be available parking passes will be available for purchase just like any of our other students as well. yeah yeah okay so question is will recent high school graduates be able to enroll i'm assuming that as long as they met all three requirements <laughs> The question was, will recent high school graduates um, be able to enroll? Well, these are upper division programs, yeah. so. Yeah, so they, I mean, they, they exactly as Dr. Belch uh, stated, these are upper division, um, upper division transfer. So they wouldn't meet the, the admission requirements if they're um, a high school applicant. So the first two years need to be completed before, and the 60 units are the 60 required. Years too. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, for those that are on the call and, and you're not able to see the chat, Aaron is also answering questions. One of the, uh, she, uh, something that's also important, all courses in these programs are accredited. Uh, thank you so much, Aaron. Aaron's also putting, again, for those that are, did not catch us, she put the VA um, information to the website here in the chat as well, um, so that the link is there posted. Uh, how long will it take for students to hear back about the appeals um, being approved or denied? What is the turnaround time period? So right now the time frame is uh, dependent upon main campus. If you have been admitted and are submitting an appeal, if you've been admitted to an on-campus program and are submitting an appeal to switch over to um, online, the time frame listed on their website is about 12 weeks. However, this is why we ask that if a student has gone through this process to email us directly, meaning email at, uh, World Campus Admissions, that way we can make sure um, you know they get inundated with with um, with appeals for main campus uh, for main campus appeals. So we have the ability to contact main campus admissions, work with them, see if we can get some of those appeals for our microsite applicants expedited. Um, so again, it's very important that if you have submitted the appeal, if you haven't received a response, email us at admission.world.sdsu.edu. Um, that way we can follow up with main campus. Uh, there are other questions about uh, how long will people hear? How long will it take for people to hear about whether or not they've been accepted through the microsite? 
So admission decisions uh, are one to two weeks. Again, um, due with the situation of working from home with COVID-19, we're looking closer more to the two week uh, time frame, and that is based upon if all of the information in the application is submitted correctly. Sometimes information is isn't accurately reported, so it does create a delay where we have to reach out to students and figure out some of the missing information. Also, if you uh, been denied to on campus and submitted one of our program change forms, we need to allow time for processing for that. So in an ideal situation, everything is submitted correctly. You uh, submitted through Cal State Apply. This is your first time. Um, we're looking at a one to two week time frame, closer to the two week time frame. Okay. Uh, some other questions. Will the program be available in 2021? We've signed our agreements and we hope to keep our partnership for a long time to come. So Absolutely. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I, I got a question, and mine has like a two part uh, two parts to it. Uh, this this course is strictly you said online, correct? Yes. So so then what was what's the point of it being at SWC if it's online if we don't have to step foot? I mean, why can't it just be a strictly uh, online program just through your campus versus having it like off site just like that if we're never even going to step foot over there anyway? So you mean yeah? Go ahead. Uh, the uh, the onsite at a Southwestern College are is optional, fully opt in. So, if you'd like to speak to a, a success advisor in person, you can come to the the uh, the campus, Southwestern campus, uh, or if you want like the optional tutoring, it's also available onsite in person at Southwestern campus. The services will also be available uh, online as well through um, virtual uh, meetings or email as well. If you'd like to just communicate virtually with uh, the, the tutor and the advisor. So there's no requirement to come to the Southwestern campus or to the SG, SDSU campus. Uh, just those options, because if there, you know, if there is any desire to have that tutoring, Southwestern, you're familiar with Southwestern College, um, maybe perhaps closer to Southwestern College uh, as far as living than you would be SDSU's campus. So those are just strictly optional. All the curriculum and content is done online and there's no need to step foot on any, any campus. Okay, so pretty much it's just discretionary because of uh, convenience. It's like say whoever lives near the SWC campus versus living near the SDSU campus. Yes, and if you wanted to take advantage of those services in person versus virtually. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is another question. I believe this uh, applies to the criminal justice uh, uh, program uh, can folks enrolled in that uh, uh, go through the law um, uh, law degree or pre law degree etc. I think that that question went by me really fast. <laughs> Dr. Colvin, can I defer that question to you? Yeah, I saw that question, and I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not sure. Um, uh, what the person is referring to, the certificate in public law. I'm not familiar with that, but um, uh, I'm happy to look into it if, if they want to, um, if we can figure out a way to get back to them, I'll, I'll find out and get some more information. And this is Professor Ledesma from Southwestern College. Um, currently, we are in uh, MOU with the California State Bar Association at Southwestern College and other partner um, four-year universities and law schools. Um, unfortunately, at this time, San Diego State is not part of that partnership. But if you do continue, um, if you end up, if you are in the Pathway to Law School program at Southwestern College and you complete your bachelor's at San Diego State through this program, and should you decide to transfer, apply to a partner law school, that will, um, your Pathway to Law School certificate from Southwestern College will um, allow you to have preferred consideration when you go to law school. But currently we are not, um, San Diego State is not a member of the, the pipeline at this time. Uh, so uh, there's also a question that uh, if a student has been denied uh, admission for this year, without registering for the microsite program, I'm assuming they can still go ahead and go through the microsite program for appeals. Uh, I, I, I would need to get more clarification as to where they were denied. If they were denied on campus, um, they don't have to submit an appeal. They simply have to fill out the program change form and again, just mm -hmm. contact us via our admission 
um, admissions email. If they've applied just to our general online um, World Campus program and were denied, those are the same requirements as our microsite program. So um, if they've been denied, they likely do not meet the re admission requirements to our microsite program, but they are welcome to submit an appeal to World Campus Admissions if they feel um, they have additional information that wasn't reported the first time, they, they have the option to appeal with us. Okay, uh, another question was, are these classes transferable to other CSU uh, programs? such as CSU Channel Island? Um, you'd have probably have to work directly with the other CSU, but these are, like um, has been said, accredited courses. They're the same exact courses uh, that students take at the face-to-face -face campus programs. So it's the same credit, um, but you'd have to speak directly to the CSU that you're interested in to make sure that um, the course is transferred to the particular program you would like to transfer to. But Generally speaking, these are the exact same courses, exact same type of credit uh, as the SCSU face-to-face -face courses. The business classes should be transferable because the business school is AACSP accredited. So that's the key thing on getting your courses transferred. So I, I would expect your upper division business courses would be transferable to other schools. Yeah, the, the only thing you would, I think the CSU requires or limits the maximum number of transferable units to 90. Um, so you would just have to work with your individual advisors to make sure that you're within the transfer limit. And, and the next. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Tina. No, I was just going to address the next question regarding evaluation of transcripts. The question is, will SCSU pre-evaluate transcripts or can SWC do it? I would imagine that's in regards to the application process. Southwestern College um, counselors, our transfer center coordinator, can, um, Nick Glisswen, whose information was shared, um, they can support you with that. You can make an appointment and see a counselor who can help you with that as well. And then we have, um, I believe Mark is on as well, Mark G is on as well, who can support as well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so folks want to know if um, they were admitted uh, to, um, is it a guarantee that I will get into the online program if I got accepted into the, uh, into the, I'm assuming SCSU for criminal justice? So if they've been um, approved for admission for on campus, then yes, they meet the requirements. They would meet the requirements for our online program. They are the same requirements. However, they still have to go through the appeal process. Um, so they'd have to submit the appeal, get that response from, from the SEC admissions office. They need to be notified that there's a switch because currently they are taking up, you know, a spot at the on-campus program. But um, in general, yes, you, if you've been admitted, you meet the requirements. You wouldn't have to worry about meeting uh, the requirements for our online, they're the same. Okay. And then uh, is there a maximum amount of upper division courses that can be transferred to SDSU? Upper uh, division, um, I'm drawing a blank right now. There is a maximum, I'm not sure. Joe, do you, Dr. Belch, do you uh, know the upper division maximum on that one? I'm sorry, again, would you repeat that? The, upper uh, the question is, is uh, how many upper division units can be transferred to SDSU? My assumption is that the person asking the question already has a degree. Uh, and therefore has some of the uh, upper I, division courses. I believe you have to do 30 units at least at SDSU. Okay, so there's a residency requirement of 30 right. units. Right. Yes, and a maximum uh, transfer units of 70 units coming from a community college. Right. right. The students cannot transfer more than 70 units from a community college, cannot transfer more than 90 units, um, I believe, from uh, a, a combination of community college and other university. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Tina, did you see any other questions go by that I missed? I did not. I think as we were answering the questions, Aaron and um, Mark were supporting us as well. Yeah, so I appreciate I think, that. Some of these yeah. are going by so fast that the, um, people are asking them again and again, and I apologize uh, for, for not getting to all of them. Uh, I think one of the questions that I saw earlier on that uh, I know we haven't answered is uh, what comes after admission? Um, 
you know, people are admitted. Can you go a little bit through the process of, of okay, when, what next? Yeah, as far as um, the admission process, once you receive that first provisional admission offer, um, your next step would be to submit official transcripts. We would then do the official transcript review, make sure that the information you self-reported is accurate. We would have your uh, degree evaluation completed. At that point, um, your degree audit would be available on the first day of class. Um, there would be support from um, from uh, academic advising throughout the throughout the the process. You you know we're working on um, I believe an orientation as well. Um, but as far as the first step after you've been offered that provisional admission is would be to submit your transcripts and then the degree evaluation would come after that. All right, I think we have a couple questions that are being asked that were already um, answered at the beginning of the webinar. Um, and just so you all are aware, again, this webinar uh, informational session will be posted so you can go back and review it. There's also an FAQ that has been posted um, that can answer some of those questions. Uh, the questions in regards to financial aid, um, we have um, asked that you all contact SDSU's financial aid department and the link is also in the chat because it's a case by case scenario. If there, I guess we can give a couple more moments to see if there are any additional questions that may pop up that we haven't addressed already. Um, there is a specific question in regards to um, the process, the application process itself. I see that question. Um, the SDSU Microsoft webpage, the application is there. The interest form, I'm sorry, the interest form is on the, the webpage. Um, and I can post that in the chat as well. And then any personal questions about filling out the application, um, you can contact Mark, who has put his information in the chat, who can support with that. Yeah, there are also a lot of questions from students uh, who have uh, met some of the requirements, but not necessarily all of the business courses or all of the uh, um, preparation for major and the question is being asked whether they could apply for those. I believe that was also answered um, at the beginning of the of the chat several times. Um, you are encouraged to apply, but I believe especially with the business program, uh, you are required to have finished those before you uh, are actually admitted. Uh, Help me out, Dr. Belch, with, with, with that. Yeah, again, I think Tanya mentioned this. There are nine prep for the major courses for business. You don't have to have all nine. You could begin the program. We would like to see six or seven of those done, and then you could finish the two or three remaining during the programming, during the program over that two-year period. But again, it's very important to recognize that you will be held responsible for completing those courses. Uh, but you don't have to have all nine. We would look at that and see how close you are. If you have, again, three, um, I would consider perhaps looking at applying for spring, but or unless you're, you can complete these over the summer, uh, it, it's your advantage to try to get as many of these done as possible because once you get into the program, you're going to find it hard to go take those courses as well as your upper division courses required by the program. Are there plans? Uh, so then there's another question about the point of contact at, uh, at Southwestern College. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, here, uh, here it is. Uh, right now you can see, uh, I believe uh, Nick, Nick Nguyen is-, is Nicholas Nguyen. Nguyen. Nicholas Nguyen is, is our point of contact uh, at, um, Southwestern College. And any of the counselors as well. All of our counselors have um, had the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one information session with our SDSU partners and they were able to get the information to support any students who are interested. Um, but Nicholas Wen is our transfer center coordinator. Coordinator, um, Thank you so much, Aaron, for posting his information as well. Uh, one of the questions that came up was, are there plans to add more ma majors to this program in the future? Yes, absolutely. As Dr. Belch mentioned, we're also, you know, looking at 
the management information systems, as well as marketing on the business side. Um, we're also looking at offering communication as an undergraduate degree completion program. Um, we're also working on uh, an engineering degree, a public health degree. So right now we're going through the process to get our California State University Chancellor's Office approval to offer these programs. And uh, given COVID-19, we're not quite sure on the timing of those, but uh, we're hoping that as early as spring 21 for some of them, and then definitely fall 21. So uh, we'll definitely be putting out more information on our microsite website, uh, as well as um, press releases and uh, news and news releases that we'll share out. Um, and of course, Southwestern and our other partners will share that information with uh, their students to make sure that everybody is aware of any new programs and majors that can be available. Uh, so here's an important question. Will there be additional costs if a student takes any of the nine uh, major preps um, uh, during uh, the time that they are uh, taking the upper division? And the answer is yes. Uh, you, uh, if you're taking those at any community colleges, you will need to pay for um, uh, the, the units at the community college. And if I might add to that, generally these prep for the major courses are taken at a community college. Mm -hmm. um, we offer those courses on campus, but currently they're not offered online. They're only available to the on-campus students. So. If you need to complete your prep for the major courses, you would want to do them at Southwestern or one of the other community colleges that might offer them online to you. Uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. to, quali to qualify for financial aid, do we need to to take do we need to take twelve units less or more? Um, the generally for uh, part time students take need to take at least six units uh, over a 15 week semester. So you need to take at least six units, um, three units in block one, maybe in three units in the, the second block. So for a total of six units over the, the two block term. Um, if you need f for full time financial aid eligibility, the unit is 12 units uh, over that same time period. So your financial aid will be determined on number of units and uh, making sure that you are at least taking units in each block. So then it would be the same as a uh, community college, how, how it is at Southwestern now, correct? It should be. I believe it's the same uh, time and unit uh, measure. Okay, thank you. So, Here's a question, uh, any partnership for Southwestern Community College students, uh, professor uh, that lecture teach some of the classes at SDSU? Uh, I believe we have talked about this, but we haven't finalized any, any, anything. Uh, the uh, qualifications may be different, the, 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 et cetera. So uh, there is uh, no definite plans on that. And Casey, if you want to elaborate, or uh, Dr. Belch, if you want to elaborate. I think, uh, especially as we expand out the, um, the programs and expand the, the number of students, uh, as we said earlier, um, with more students, we add more facilitators uh, and more lecturers, instructors. So I know Dr. Belch is always looking for qualified um, instructors as an, on an as needed basis. Um, but I'll defer to him to, to elaborate any more on that. Um, but there, there may potentially be options. Mm -hmm. No, I think you've answered that. Yeah. And I'll say the same for Dr. Colvin. I know Dr. Colvin's currently going through the process of hiring uh, instructors to teach in the criminal justice program as well. I think he has identified a majority of the instructors uh, for the fall. Uh, but again, uh, there may be additional opportunities as we expand out these uh, partnerships uh, with other colleges and take on more students. Yep, that's correct. Fall, um, we're pretty set for fall, but I think in the uh, subsequent semesters, we'll be looking to expand our, uh, our uh, part-time teaching pool. Um, thank you, everyone. Any final questions here? The last uh, question was, the professor is teaching that from SDSU, correct? Yes, that is correct. 
their SDSU professors. Uh, yes, the FA, the, the, quite a few questions have come up about the FAQ being updated with the new questions that were asked today. Um, Aaron addressed that earlier. The FAQ will be updated to address these questions as well. Um, the questions, the FAQ along with the PowerPoint and this web uh, informational session, uh, session recording will all be posted on our website as well. So I know that it looks like we've gotten through, uh, there are more questions coming in. Um, do we get to walk during graduation ceremony with SDSU? Uh, SDSU, yes, that was already answered earlier. Uh, yes, you do get to participate in the graduation ceremony. And the, the costs per unit are listed in the PowerPoint and uh, no, they are not $46 per unit. The, yeah. uh, so, um, Tina, shall we? Yes, thank you all so much. Um, we really appreciate our partners um, from San Diego State University for joining us. We appreciate all of the time and the information that you've provided our students. Um, also, thank you so much to our interested students um, who showed up today and asked really great questions. Um, so much so that we're gonna, sounds like we're gonna update the FAQ to include these questions. So we definitely appreciate that. Um, if you have any more direct questions that need to be answered, please contact Mark G or reach out to our uh, counseling department, our transfer center coordinator, Nicholas Wynn. Again, this information will be posted and we appreciate all of the questions. You all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, Thank very you much to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you Dr. Bradley, for everything. Thank you. Bye-bye.